as we saw here the, the, the communication problem results in this extremely complicated expre looking expression that we would want we now need to analyze. This expression depends on the distribution the channel noise distribution here the problem which is the probability of seeing a certain output given a certain input and in that expression has gone the channel the, the input which depends on the encoding strategy the uh, and the and in the out, uh, and also in this expression has gone the output which depends on the decoding strategy. And the goal is to find and our goal was to find combinations of f n and g n so as to minimize this this particular error. So, naturally this is this is not an e, uh, the, by no means an easy problem, uh, but, but there are there are ways by which we can approach this particular problem and that is what we will we will talk about now. So, the first subclass of problems that we can consider is what is called. So, the first subclass of problems that we can consider is what are called data compression problems. So, data compression data compression refers to the situation in which the uh, the sender of information or uh, or the source uh, ha has to be recovered with uh, uh, at the destination but it has to be done but but there is uh, there is a limitation in the channel the channel is not noisy the channel will not uh, will not add noise but it it provides us with very limited storage capacity so there are not that many uh, we, we, we do not have enough possible distinct channel inputs that we can accommodate all the possible values of that the source could potentially take. So, the, the challenge in a, so in a data compression problem is to decide how to take this particular to the how to take the source that we have and optimally use it. So, that we are making use of the channel resources that we have. The channel resources are not constrained as I said by the uh, by any uh, disturbance or noise that they add, but rather in how many we have. They are uh, each each C resource is perfect in the sense that the channel does not add any noise uh, when, uh, when, uh, when the input goes into it, but there are not that as many inputs uh, as the number of source symbol. Okay. So, so, the setting is as follows. So, we have we have here data let us say the, uh, the uh, this here is of length n. So, this here is the source which we will call let us say S1 to Sn that is your data here. This has to be sent to a destination. So, it has to recover uh, this has to be recovered at the destination. Let us say whatever is recovered is denoted S1 hat to Sn hat. Now, the process of sending this from source to destination happens over a medium which is limited in, a fo in the following sense that it can, it can take only a certain number of uh, it only has a certain number of distinct inputs which means for example, the, the medium could be limited in, um, in the kind of fidelity it offers it, it could be uh, you know it, it only lets you uh, send certain types of symbols maybe or, uh, or, or certain number of symbols or, or, or there is a limitation on how often you can use this use the medium. All of these are uh, one and the same way of, of describing this particular situation. We will also consider the case we will consider for simplicity the case where these this data is actually binary. So, this here is a sequence in 0 1 to the power n right. So, this is this is therefore, a sequence of what is what are called bits. So, this is that that is your source ok. So, this is your source. Now, when I want to talk of the limitations of the medium and I said that you cannot uh, you cannot the medium is not rich enough to accommodate all the possible values of the source. What I mean is that the medium can potentially take only 2 raised to k possible inputs. So, it has it can only take 2 raised to k possible inputs. In, 
So, think of it this way that the uh, you have let us say two uh, strings of length n uh, binary strings of length n. So, these are effectively uh, uh, think of them as some say 2 raised to n different uh, words or 2 raised to n different books that uh, that that you want to send from uh, the source here from the source to the destination. But then this the, the, the way of sending them has to go through a rack and that rack is say like a, like a rack in, uh, a book rack or a bookshelf in the library and that bookshelf has only 2 raised to k possible slots. So, it can hold only 2 raised to k possible books. So, what one does is you send, you send a book on one side of the rack that is what the sender does okay, and or the encoder would do and the decoder on the other hand gets to see get you know he he can just pull the book out from the other end of the rack that that is what the decoder at the other end would do. But you cannot potentially uh, you know you cannot use you can add there are only 2 raised to k possible uh, slots. So, there will always be certain books or certain certain sources that you will not be able to fit into this particular into this particular medium. And that is uh, that is essentially the, uh, the, the, the problem of compression. So, what you have to do is take your source which is present here compress it in a way th that uh, into something much smaller and take uh, and use that whatever is that uh, there which is at the other end and to reconstruct what was sent. Okay. So, this is so, uh, so since I mentioned that we can we, we need to introduce an encoder and decoder let me just draw those entities here into the picture. So, once again we have an encoder here we will denote this encoder by f this encoder decides which book goes in which slot. There is a decoder sitting at the other end who is able to pull the book out that is your decoder and then uh, he, 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 he sees what was uh, we, uh, the, the what is what is present in that slot and then uh, and then you know reproduces the book. Now, really technically we do not really need to actually send that book itself at the other end. What one only needs to do is send say an identifier for the book. Say for example, we can send its I, you know ISBN number or its name or, or a URL or something like that and that is what is kept in that slot. So, the decoder only looks at that particular pointer looks at that identifier and then from that identifier reconstructs what book was what uh, what book it was that you wanted to send. So, presume uh, the what is being presumed here is that the encoder and decoder have have to begin with agreed on a on a scheme that in which all our books have been given some kind of identifiers or some kind of numbers some kind of tags are present in which both encoder and decoder on which both encoder and decoder have agreed uh, that this is the, this book will stand for this this particular tag this book will stand for this particular tag and so on so the isbn way of numbering or the doi is that we assign to papers or and so on all of these are basically these uh, agreed upon numberings and agree or agreed upon labelings of of all the possible uh, messages that we have at the source end. So, this particular uh, this particular labeling is our encoding and uh, encoding strategy. So, this labeling which we say we in which we basically say that we in which we assign a uh, a slot to every book is is our encoding strategy. And what the decoder needs to do is basically just invert this particular messaging, this particular labeling. He needs to look at the slot and then from there infer what is the book that was being sent. So, so, so what we have here is that you have a labeling scheme for all 
values of S1 to Sn. that assigns a 1 out of 2 raised to k inputs. Now, if so let us now think what uh, where the difficulty lies. So, what would happen if k was greater than n? So, so if k was greater than n if k was greater than n this this problem would rather would be rather easy because every possible there are two raised to n possible books or two raised to n possible sources and there are two raised to k uh, k slots and the slots outnumber the books so every book would get a unique slot right so if k is greater than n we would not we would never have an error we would never have an error. And the reason we do not have an error is because if you remember I, I mentioned that this, this, this medium is noiseless, it is just is just a cupboard where you uh, uh, where these where you have these pre decided uh, possible uh, po possible shelves and uh, all you need to do all that the encoder needs to do is say that this shelf is being used and then the decoder at the other end just this knows what what book was being referred to. So, if k is greater than n there is adequate space for all the possible books uh, that we want to uh, that we want to uh, you know communicate from one end to the other and so as a result there, there would never be an error. But let us suppose uh, uh, in fact in the same situation would also in fact the same situation would also arise if k is equal to n. So, if k is equal to n there would be just enough space for all the possible uh, uh, for all the possible values of the source uh, you then you could just then uh, get back whatever it is that uh, was uh, was being uh, uh, conveyed by the sender or the or the encoder. So, the challenge in this problem comes because as I mentioned because of compression the effect of compression which is that you do not have you have a resource constraint we do not have as big a shelf to accommodate all the possible books right. So, what we uh, what we there uh, we, we are therefore in the domain in the regime where k is less than n. So, the number of possible inputs is smaller than the number of possible 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 values of uh, possible values of n. Of, of s ok. So, now so if now if uh, let us see when is it that uh, what a, a source will be correctly recovered at the destination. It will be correctly recovered at the destination if if you know suppose a source value uh, m is being sent from uh, is being sent from the source this is be mapped this is mapped to an f of m here which is which is one of the uh, which is one of the input the decoder decoder should should know that well if a, if f if a, if f of m is what is seen at the medium so if if f of m is what is seen here at, uh, out here then then in the book m is what has to be sent in other words the decoder should be able to invert invert f on the on the on this subset of inputs. So, of all the possible uh, um, inputs that have come here the decoder should be able to in, uh, invert and then get back get uh, and reconstruct reconstruct what m is that is when you would have no error. Now, there will always be a clash as because there are fewer inputs here than the than the values of the source. So, the way to ensure that there is no clash is to ensure that you is 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 to uh, is to sort of come up with an agreement where where you which you can do this in one uh, one of two ways. One way is that you say well I am not going to map all the books here, I am going to take only as only a certain subset, I am going to really sub take only to a certain subset and that subset is this to uh, some subset of size 2 raised to k these are going to be my high priority books. 
I am going to map those uh, to, to, to I am going to give them a, a space in, in this shelf and all the others I just declare that they are not going to be then they are not going to be recovered and uh, that is part of my loss. The other is to say well I am going to map you know every possible uh, book that can come up to, to one possible slot, but whenever but the decoder will, will only be told one of them like to the decoder will only map f of m when it sees f of m the decoder will map it only to one of the pre images that are there. So, if there are multiple books that could have been assigned the same slot the decoder only picks one of those particular books and then uh, uh, out of those books and then and maps that back to the uh, use uses g to uh, to invert that f. In either case what you are doing is f here f is basically a many to one many to one mapping, but we are looking for a, uh, is, a, is a many to one mapping, but we are looking for a subset, but we are looking for a subset of 2 raised to n. So, we are looking for a subset of 0 1 to the n of size 2 raised to k. So, we are looking for a subset of size 2 raised to k which will be will be recovered by g. So, that is what will be that is the plan. So, we, that is what we want to want to look for. Now, how do by what is the logic for look uh, for uh, for for finding such a uh, for by with what goal do we are we going to approach this particular problem? Remember, the goal in all these all our communication problems is to minimize is to somehow minimize a kind of cost between the source and the that is de dependent between on the error between the source and the destination. So let us suppose that our uh, the cost that we are going to consider is simply the probability of error. So we are going to look for we going to seek f n and g n to such that to, uh, to minimize the probability that s 1 to s n is not equal to s 1 hat to s n hat. This is what we want to do, we want to minimize this particular probability. So, remember that we I have already told you that all all books cannot be recovered There is you can only recover 2 raised to k uh, because that is that is the way uh, your your slotting uh, you know that is the, uh, the resource constraint that you have. But so, so the goal is then to say which which ones should you be prioritizing so that you get the least possible probability. Now, this particular question of which gives you the least possible probability is actually a very tricky question to answer because there are many different combinations here. You, are, you if you can if you see, you are looking at a set of size two raised to n, of which we want to look for a subset of size two raised to k and uh, with prob whose probability is uh, such uh, you know with the highest possible probability so that the complement is has a problem has a very small probability. So, instead of looking at this specific term which is that you are trying to minimize the actual probability the approach that Shannon takes is a is a far uh, is, is an ingenious one is that he th says well I do not really need to know what is the exact minimum probability let me not worry about that exact uh, exact value instead let me just address the final question let me ask is it possible to construct fngn okay for each n such that limit as n tends to infinity 
of this the probability this particular probability S1 to Sn not equal to S1 hat to Sn hat this limit is equal to 0. So, which means with prob with as n goes to infinity with probability 1 you would you would have you would uh, recover uh, uh, pretty uh, with probability 1 you would recover uh, require recover what the source was saying. So, question that so Shannon is approaching this question by saying I do not care about what the actual minimum probability is for any particular n. I am just going to ask ok is it really when is it possible to get uh, let n uh, as uh, to make this probability of error 0 as n goes to infinity. If that is if that is done then that is good enough because then I know that that is in fact the best one can do all right. Now, so uh, now of course before one does this for as n goes to infinity it is uh, one needs to formulate the problem for a finite n. So, so the this particular uh, so, to formulate this problem for a finite n we have we can write it in the following way. So, given an epsilon greater than 0 does there exist f n g n and n, lar n large enough such that the probability of S1 to Sn the probability that S1 to Sn is not equal to S1 hat to Sn hat is less than epsilon. Now this is what we want to achieve. Now if you think about it here what we are doing is we are taking the limit as n goes to infinity. So, which means that as n increases the number of possible values of the source or you know the number of in, in other words the number of possible books that I was referring to that you want to store in your in, in your library the number of possible books there is itself growing and it is growing exponentially. On the uh, so now for this whole problem to make sense we also it, it has to also be that you have to also ensure that k itself also grows. So, we want to let therefore k to also grow with n because if k, k does not grow with n if k remains constant with n then the problem does not have much meaning because then the you know soon you will have a situation where the number of books becomes very much much larger than the number of storage amount of storage space that you have. And, uh, you know you will not be able to uh, recover anything at all. So, if you are if you are looking for this kind of objective which is a kind of a strong objective where you want the probability of error to go to 0 you know not just look for probability of error smallest probability of error we want actually the probability of error itself to go to 0 it is essential to look at a regime where k also grows with n. Okay. So, we need it is necessary that we need k to k to grow with n this is essential without this the problem is uh, ca cannot be given any meaningful solution right. So, if so then the uh, now now the so the so, so now that we see that k must all must be growing with n we can we can talk of very many different types of cases. But remember k is growing uh, but we have to talk of cases where still k is less than n because uh, that is the regime we are in. So, one possible way of thinking about this is to ask ok suppose I allow for k to be some theta times n right. So, k is suppose if a, a constant theta times n where theta here is less than 1. So, k is then growing at the rate theta times n where theta is the slope of uh, or the rate of growth and, and that is less than 1. Now, in that case notice what, what actually happens. If you see we have 2 raised to k possible books uh, possible slots. Now, k is itself theta, uh, theta times n. So, this is therefore 
2 raise to theta times n. Now, suppose uh, let us look at the fraction of that is uh, that that is being uh, let us look at the fraction of 2 raise to k to 2 raise to n. So, this divided by 2 raise to n that is equal to 2 raise to theta times n divided by 2 raise to n. And now what is this particular value? This is 2 raise to theta minus 1 times n. And since theta is strictly less than 1, this, this term here is, is actually 2 raised to something negative right? Uh, times n. And so as n goes to infinity, this term actually goes to 0. So, in other words, if we are looking for k growing with n, but k strictly less than n, that means we are looking for something th k equal to theta times n where theta is less than 1. We are effectively talking of a fraction, uh, the number of books that are going to be recovered, that are going to be correctly stored, that is the number of slots that we have in the in, in our rack, that fr the fraction the fraction of that relative to the number of total number of books that we actually have that fraction itself goes to 0, which means that what is going to happen in this in it is kind of inescapable that we would we would actually be recovering a, a, a very very small fraction of the total number of books. Now, on the face of it this might seem like a, a contradiction because uh, on the one hand I am talking I am saying here that I want the probability of recovery to be uh, to be 1 that means or probability of error to be 0, but at the same time I am saying that we are recovering a very very tiny fraction of book, tiny fraction of, uh, of the value of the possible source values. What is amazing which, which is what Shannon really found out is that this these are not mutually contradictory and that this this can in both can in fact be done and this is in fact the secret of uh, of the of shannon's data compression theorem so i will talk about that in the next class